welcome back. We're in Exodus chapter 19, verses 18 to 25 today. And we're at Mount Sinai. The people have been gathered around. Let's see what happens next. Now Mount Sinai was all in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked violently. When the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered with thunder. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Go down, warn the people, so that they do not break through to the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. Also let the priests who come near to the Lord consecrate themselves, or else the Lord will break out against them. Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for you warned us, saying, Set bounds about the mountain and consecrate it. Then the Lord said to him, Go down and come up again, you and Aaron, with you, but do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to the Lord, or he will break forth upon them. So Moses went down to the people and told them, now, it kind of sounds here, if you read between the lines, got to be careful there, but it sounds like Moses really didn't want to go down. I mean, he's 80 years old, but he's a very spry 80. He's probably a better 80 than you, I are, or, you or I are at 30. He's a very a virile man, uh, but he didn't want to go back all the way back down the mountain and tell the people, don't come up here again. He's already done that. But God tells him, no, you go down and tell the people. So they're really emphasizing, be careful. And notice there's kind of this threefold thing, right? Moses is going to go up to the top. Aaron, who's going to be the high priest, he's not yet. There's no priesthood yet. Uh, Aaron's going to come up with him. So he gets to come all the way up. Uh, the priests, the priests don't exist yet, but they're mentioned here at verse 24. So I wonder if this is Aaron and his sons sort of quasi, you know, kind of beginning to act as though they were priests. And it, it's going to be confirmed uh, coming on here a little bit further on. Uh, but, or is this something that's put back in the text? Are there people who were the elders of the people? We're really not told. And you look at the commentaries, you really don't get a solution to this. But we're not going to get the priesthood uh, for several more chapters. So it's interesting to see it right here, back here. Fascinating and something that we really don't have a big answer for. But there's a differentiation between where the people can be, where Moses can be, and where the priests can be. So it's, it's kind of like, like I said, it's a temporary, I said yesterday morning, this is going to be like a temporary sanctuary the last couple of mornings. So Mount Sinai becomes a temporary tabernacle in dividing things into different locations where the people can be and can't be. So we'll find that priesthood being established in Exodus 20 and 29, but again, that's some chapters away. Now, did you notice that God comes down and Moses goes up? God comes down and meets Moses at the top of the mountain. Moses comes up from the bottom, uh, from the base of the mountain. He comes up to the top of the mountain. They're going to meet at the top. And so does God really come down? Remember, God is everywhere present, right? He's everywhere present. So, and yet it's put in kind of these human terms. God's coming down to, uh, God is transcendent. He's big, he's high, he's God, he's infinite. Moses is just a human person, but he's going to go up to the highest place and they're going to meet there. God's going to meet him. And it's not that God's going to dangle there just out of his reach. They're going to meet together. And so we have this coming together. So God is both totally transcendent. He's also uh, totally imminent. He comes down all the way to reach where man is. And yet we have Moses as sort of a mediator figure here, an intercessor for all of Israel here. Moses is the one who speaks back and forth to God and brings the messages to the people. Moses is kind of the messenger. And it's kind of an important thing here, you know, a lot of people have a Christianity really where God doesn't come down all the way. God just comes down part way. And uh, then we have to supply the uh, with different saints and holy people and uh, and different things like that have that kind of get us get us into a connection with God. That's not the way it is in the Bible. God comes all the way down. He sends the ladder all the way down. The, the ladder goes from heaven all the way to earth. Jesus is the ladder. Uh, then we have kind of a, to, a totally imminent God, like, hey, God's my bud, he's my friend, he's my bro. We have that kind of attitude. We're backslapping, hey, this is Jesus, and we're all just on the same level. No, you're not. You're not on the same level. Yes, Jesus is a man. He's a human. He, he took a human body like you and I, 100% human, and yet he's also 100% God, okay? So, so uh, God is totally imminent. He comes uh, totally down to us to meet us, and he, yet he's also completely transcendent. And God is not just uh, just a, a, a buddy that we can slap on the back. Jesus, God is holy, and we see that here on Mount Sinai. This is being emphasized. There's a holiness to God. We shouldn't miss this. Yes, God wants us to. He wants to be our friend. He wants us to relate to him on a friendship basis, a personal basis. He's not an impersonal God. He's very personal. But it's also that he's the creator and we're the creatures, and there's like a gigantic difference 
between the two, something to keep in mind as we go. All right, let's go on into the next chapter tomorrow morning. We'll see you then.